What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Scorego. And today is going to be one of those videos where I don't really want to talk about these things, but they need to be talked about because I want this game to last the test of time. I want it to keep progressing and performing super, super well for all the player base, but I feel like there's some things that need to be said. Some things regarding power creep, certain game mode changes, uh, eliminating some RNG. All of these things would really, really help the quality of life for gamers, and it honestly would help players want to invest more money in the game because right now, they're just really isn't a big reason as to do that except that you just want to brag and boast about how high the score is in. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the power creep in this game. So pretty much every single banner that we get is just another stronger character on top of another stronger character on top of another stronger character and it just keeps going in that direction over and over and over, right? And every mobile game does have to have a certain amount of power creep. That's just a normal thing. Right, because in order for mobile games to make money, they got to give character, make characters stronger in order for people to want to go out and buy them. The problem with KOF is that they keep doing it about every three weeks. Every three weeks, a month or so, we always have new power creep and always new stronger characters. Well, the characters have gotten so strong that they make all the game modes in the game mincemeat. Like, really, there is no challenging content for players. Uh, that much at all, guys. There, there really isn't that much challenging content for players, in all honesty, guys. I mean, there might be a couple things in the game that might be somewhat challenging, maybe for some players, but for the most part, it's pretty relatively easy, and, and I'm just going to kind of focus on Gilray because this is really where we get the most rewarding uh, things in, right? This is where we can actually get you know, a chance of getting a BS or SS memory. Well, the thing is, you know, when you got characters that are scoring, you know, billions upon billions, I mean, look at this. I mean, my boys here are getting 3 billion, 3 billion, right? I can get like 10 billion in this thing. Uh, it's just like, why? Like, why would I want to level up my character? Why would I want to level up a character all the way to level 70, right? Why would I want to do that when we get characters so strong that even at A1, guys, just at one star, they can get the minimum requirements to get the max rewards in this thing, right? I mean, how long can you bra brag and boast about the scores you're getting? I know it's cool getting those high scores, and I get excited about it too, but what is the point of it, right, other than bragging and boasting? And this is where my first criticism of the game is, right? We need to make these rewards, like the rewards are fine, but what they should do is reward players for either playing the game for a long time as if they're veterans, or the fact that they just put a lot of money into the game because, you know, if you're a veteran, you're going to be able to farm up and level up a character like, say, Rugal or Kyo, whoever it may be, and to where they're going to do some really insane damage, right? We'll make it to where, you know, either some RNG gets eliminated over time or whenever you score a certain amount of points, you're guaranteed a reward from here, right? Because that's a big problem in here is that we always have so much RNG. And, you know, on one hand... I guess for some players, it's not a big deal because they don't have to score that many points to get this, right? And they can easily get that 1.25 billion, no problem. Most players, not all, but most players can do it, guys. I mean, I know players who've been playing this game for, you know, less than a month, and they're already scoring one key. They're already getting the score in one key, right? And you have four keys per day. So my suggestion that Marvel is, you know... Give us a reason to have these stronger characters, like in this game mode or maybe another game mode, right? Give us a reason to level them up and, 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 and get them all maxed out. Because currently in the game, there's really nothing that requires you to max out a character. Even, I mean, I guess there's an argument maybe for a chapter of fight. I guess there's an argument for... This game mode right here in order to max out a character, because if you max them out, then you're going to be able to get a whole lot more CP on them, right? And I realize not everybody's going to have the EX uh, card set, the successor set, that's going to give a lot of CP to your EX characters. But I mean, even using a Mad Tea Party set, guys, on like these EX characters, like even Akuma, I showed you guys in a video a while back, whenever I put just a Mad Tea Party set on this guy and used the free option card on him, I was able to get enough CP to go all the way to the top of this. Right? Like, I didn't have to max them completely out. I didn't have to use double attack, moon, and star-shaped stones on the character in order to get enough CP to do this, right? And as far as damage, there is no game mode in the game that requires you to max out a character. Nothing. 
Right. And, and, and that's kind of my problem. It's like, you know, we don't really have a whole lot of incentive or a whole lot of reason. So if they made it to where, you know, like in Guild Raid, we had to score a certain amount of points, we needed those super strong characters, then it would be more worthwhile to try to level them up and to try to pull for them. I really think it's a win-win for Netmarble and the player base because I want the rewards to stay the same, like to where, you know, a newer player comes in, maybe they don't score uh, the a certain amount. Maybe they score the 1.25 billion and they still get their boxes here, right? And they still have a chance of getting these BS and SS memories. And I want that to stay. I don't want that to change. But players that are able to score a certain amount of points in here, they're able to, you know, either have a chance up for the BS and SS memories, or they have a guaranteed, or maybe if you you know score, score a certain amount of points, you can get certain fragments, and then after a while, you can combine those fragments to get an SS or BS memory, something like that, right? That would be awesome, right? Eliminate a little RNG, and I think the player base would be a whole lot happier, and they would feel more motivated to level up their characters or pull for really, really strong characters. Another problem that we have is that we don't get to use all of our characters. Like, we have all of these characters in here, but we don't really play with them. Yeah, there's going to be a certain few. You might use some in RHD and so have you. But once you finish RHD, then what? Then what's the end game? You're not really going to be doing anything with them, right? You're going to be using the same old characters for Guild Raid. You're going to be using the same characters for Chapter 5 because you're only going to level up so many characters because it requires a lot of resources to max out characters, right? You And that's kind of the problem, right? You keep getting stuck using the same characters over and over and over. Now, a couple of ideas that I can give them is, you know, right now we do have the Codex where whenever you level a character up to 30, 60, and 90, you do gain CP for your entire roster, right? So if I take Kim Capuan to level 90, I'll get a lot of extra attack, HP, and defense for my entire roster. Well, if they set up the Codex to where you awaken a character to one star, two star, three star, and so on, maybe you would gain extra CP, Right. And, you know, keep the CP requirements the way they are right now, currently in the game. But maybe after a year, year and a half, after the uh, Awakened characters and Awakened level two, like, like Awakened level three, gain extra CP, then maybe implement some other game modes that require some extra CP. I mean, I think that might actually be a good thing because it actually give you a reason to level up all of your characters or maybe not do that at all. Maybe not add anything to the codex and just make it to where we can use our characters in multiple game modes. Right. Make it to where we have to use other characters, like an absolute war. Have a goal border week, right? Everybody is using the same characters over and over and over every single week, and they don't have to, right? They can switch it up if they want to, but why would you when you're already using your strongest characters available, right? Why would you do that? So, I mean, having gold border characters in here would actually be really good, and they might have to bring some gold border characters back when it comes to class, maybe even bring some back in the United Banner. That would be something really good and actually might make even United Banner actually really good again. Or maybe just, you know, weeks of regular fest characters, right? Non-BS, non-SS, non-collaboration, just our regular KOF fighters, or, or well, maybe not KOF because, you know, now we got KOF 15, Keo, who's considered a KOF original, but just like regular cost 63 characters, right? Something like that, right? Make it make it have us a little bit more variety and versatility in these game modes. And they could do the same thing, honestly, with Guild Raid. They could do the same thing with Guild Raid. They could do the same thing with Guild Boss Challenge. Have different requirements, you know. Maybe we could only use attack. Maybe we could only use defense. Maybe we could only use uh, balance and so on and so on and so on, right? Switch it up a little bit for us so that we're forced to use other characters and it makes more characters relevant throughout the game. Right? I mean, if I'm just going to use the same three characters every single time for Nightmare Geese on Inferno, right? Why would I change them, right? I mean, right now, like, you know, I mean, I know this is kind of extreme, but my, I can get almost 10 billion guys with my Rugal. Almost 10 billion. I can get 9 billion easily with him, you know, by using this team right here. The same three characters over and over and over along with these strikers. Why would I change it? I mean, sometimes I change it for fun. Right, but it sure would be nice to have a reason to use all these super strong characters or you know be forced to use other characters to to make it more difficult because right now a big problem in the game is that all our game modes are just so easy because of all this power creep that we have. I mean everybody's just plowing through it, guys. I mean, do you remember when Immortal Dungeons used to be challenging? Do you remember when this used to actually be challenging? This is not challenging anymore. This is a complete joke. We are murdering this crap. 
We are murdering it. Give us another immortal dungeon that's actually difficult, right? Make it to where we have to use our cost 65 or cost 70 characters, right? And give us better rewards for doing it. Give us more rubies for doing it. But really what I want to see, guys, is just us use more of our roster. I want to have more of a reason for pulling these characters because, I mean, like, yeah, Keel here is the strongest character in the game right now. I mean, I've seen him score almost 30 billion on an account, which is absolutely nuts. Why would you need to do that? Why do you need to score 30 billion? You don't. It's absolutely ridiculous. And when players know that they can get a certain score and they can get the max rewards and they don't have to level their characters up that much, why would they want to level them up unless it's their favorite character, unless they want to, right? But if they know that they have to level up character in order to get a certain amount of points to get guaranteed rewards, like what I was talking about in Guild Raid earlier, then they're going to be more motivated to want to pull for those characters. Or when reruns happen, they're going to want to pull for those characters. Because right now, the way the game is set up, it's really just more of a collector's game. You know, we just come in here, we pull on these banners, and we just collect these characters. Right? I mean, especially for someone like me that's got a developed roster. And I know a lot of you out there don't have developed rosters yet, but eventually you're going to get one. Even if you're free to play, you're going to get one eventually. Right? I run into this problem even on my free to play account. Right? You just get to the point where things are going to start getting boring and mundane because all the game modes are just super, super easy, right? And I could go on all day about other game modes that need to change, you know, things that need to be in place. But I mean, really, Net Marble, they need to find a way to give us a reason to want to pull for these characters and want to max them out. Because currently in the game right now, there is no reason. You can do these Immortal Dungeons, no problem. You can do Absolute War, no problem. I mean, you can even come into RHD with some cheeky teams, right? And you can come in here and use, you know, Awaken Level 3 characters, right, that have certain dots. Characters like Ryu, Akuma, right, Chun-Li, Soul Bad Guy, like all those characters, uh, Kula, SSK, SS Kula, like all those characters are just nutty in this thing because of the cheesiness of the fact that they can apply dot to all the enemies without getting reflected. So you can do a bunch of cheesy crap in here to where you don't really even have to max out your characters for that either, right? I mean, again, Chapter Fight's really the only game mode where we have to really max out a character, and that's not even true for all the characters, as I showed you guys. And bragging and boasting is fun about how much we score, but at the end of the day, guys, I mean, how long can you do that? How long can you boast and brag without feeling like there's a real reason to level up the characters other than just love for the character? Which is why I always tell you guys to just level up characters that you love, because more than likely they're going to be strong enough anyways to do pretty much everything in the game for you. And there's all kinds of other things that I could talk about, all kinds of quality of life changes that could be done in the game. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys would like to see change, or if you agree or disagree with me, and why you would agree or why you would disagree. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GNT plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody.